There's a story in the scriptures about a man who comes to Jesus because his daughter is dying. I mean, what would you do if your daughter was dying? And I shudder to even talk about that. And I know many of you have dealt with these kind of situations and I have no words for that. But I think I know enough to know that if your daughter is dying, you know what you would do? You would do anything, anything. And this man who comes to Jesus, he's a, he's a leader in the synagogue. He's a religious leader. He probably has esteem. He's supposed to know things about God and prayer and how it all works. And this man comes to Jesus. And in the scripture, it says he throws himself at Jesus' feet and begs him repeatedly to come and help his daughter. I mean, he'll do anything. He doesn't care about who he is, his position, his belief. He just comes to Jesus and begs him to help his daughter. Early on in my ministry, I spent a little bit of time as a chaplain at Children's Hospital in Denver. And there's so many great people there doing such amazing and healing work. And at the same time, there's so much desperation as, as so many parents are desperate for their children to have help parents like this man who would do absolutely anything. And when I hear stories like that in the scriptures, my mind, my, my intellectual mind tries to, to grab something to hold on to and has so many questions like, like, why this girl? Because Jesus goes there and he heals this man's daughter. Why, why her when there's so many other kids too? So many other people too? Like, why was it her? Why do treatments work for some children and some adults and not for others? Why do some kids get illnesses that are curable and others don't? Was this girl just sleeping? Did she really come back from the dead? How are we supposed to understand these stories? Because I, I see this happen in the scripture and the stories, but then in my own life, I don't see any of that happening. Some people say you have to believe it just so, and other people just try to ignore it. And so what am I supposed to do with all that? Jesus, in this story, when the man falls at his feet and says, come help my daughter, he goes with the man. And as they come closer to where his daughter is, some of those people, they come to him and say, your daughter, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble this teacher anymore. Your daughter is dead. It's too late. It's over. But Jesus says something to them, to them really powerful. He says, don't doubt. Only believe. Says this little girl, she's not dead. She's, she's merely asleep. And they all laugh at Jesus. They all laugh at Jesus. You know why they laugh at Jesus? Because... She's dead. And when it comes to death, death is final. Nobody can reach into death. It's ultimate. So they laugh at Jesus. But here's what I love about Jesus so much. He's not deterred by their laughter. He's not deterred by the specter of death and all that's a part of this story. He goes to that little girl. And then you know what he does? It says he takes her by the hand. He takes her by the hand. You see, Jesus is breaking all the rules. A holy man's not supposed to touch someone who's dead. They're unclean. You don't touch them. But Jesus, he is not worried about that. He's not worried about the rules. He's worried about this girl. He's worried about life. And he takes her by the hand. And he says this phrase to her, Talitha kum. Talitha kum, it's a, it's a phrase in Aramaic. It's really interesting because the gospel writer is writing in Greek, but he uses this term in Jesus' native language, the Aramaic. I think that's because some phrases you can't translate. The power, the meaning, the, the, all that they hold in them, you can't translate that. And, and they says, Talitha kum, you know what that means? It means little girl, get up. Little girl, get up. You see, Jesus breaks all the rules. You're not supposed to touch somebody who's dead. He grabs her by the hand. 
The dad is supposed to say, stay dead, right? But Jesus isn't worried about that. He just tells her to get up. What a powerful phrase. Can you hear the risen Christ saying that to you? Get up. I mean, what about you? Do sometimes you feel dead? Do you feel lifeless? Do you feel drained? Are you tired? Does despair creep in? Do sometimes you feel like you need to be brought back to life? I mean, we all feel like that sometimes, don't we? Life is hard and we brush up against death. You know, as soon as I get done recording this, I'm going to go to see a couple friends of mine, one whose, whose father just died. He's grieving his father. And the other, another friend of mine who's been having serious treatment for a life-threatening illness. Both of these friends of mine brushing up against death, but you know what? Both of them, they have life in them. They have spirit in them. They have power in them. And my prayers, they and all of us can hear that phrase, get up. Jesus says, don't fear, only believe. Well, I don't know about you, but I've tried not being afraid. It doesn't work so good for me. Maybe I can manage my fears. Maybe I can minimize them. I still got some of them. But, but to believe, that's something I can do. Now see, when... I get all my intellectual mind questions about a miraculous story like this. If I get back from them a little bit, and I see that big picture, you know what I see? I see a story and I don't know what exactly happened back then. I don't know how it happened or how it worked, nor do I feel like I need to have the answers, nor do I feel like what we believe about that story makes any difference. But what I do know is that my belief in the power of Jesus is stronger than the power of my fears. My belief in the power of God and the power of life is stronger than death. It's stronger than darkness. And it's certainly stronger than my fears. So yeah, I'm gonna have my fears. Those will be with me. But my belief in Jesus, that's more powerful. And when I back up from the story and let all those questions kind of float away, you know what, you know what I'm left with? I'm left with a story about a father who is desperate, a little girl who is unwell and needs help, and Jesus who walks into their lives and takes her by the hand. It's such a beautiful story about the power of love, about the power of life. And may that story be in us, wherever you are in life. Whenever you're feeling down, lifeless, dead, despairing. Maybe you can hear an Aramaic phrase, Talitha kum. <laughs> but if you don't remember that, remember these two simple words. Get up. When you're struggling, the risen Christ, I think, says to you and to me and to all of us, get up. Get up, I am near you. Get up, you have life in you. Get up you have spirit in you. Get up and believe in the power of love and life and connection to Christ, which is more powerful than anything else in your life. I don't know how that story happened, but I know we're left with this phrase. Get up and believe. May you have that life in you. And may we share that journey together.